she was about to welcome her first child. Her mom passed away, so she couldn't wait to have her own. She wanted to better herself to be there for her daughter. She was my gift. She was a butterfly, my shooting star. I am so sick and tired of saying that it's a tragedy. Yes, it's a tragedy, but how are we going to stop this? Yesterday, we had a whole detail out with my street crimes unit. We had the state police out. And we have my street crimes, you know, working side by side to stop incidents such as this, stop these random shootings. And they were 30 seconds off. They were in the right neighborhood, but just 30 seconds off, 30 seconds off. We are trying, but this, this hurts. This every homicide in the city hurts, but this really hurts because you have a 19 year old female who was pregnant that was gunned down. I can't say that she was the target or anything like that, but who in her right mind would just shoot into a crowd of people where there are little kids at? Little kids, little helpless kids out there playing on a nice day. Excuse me, little girl. Oh, you are so girl. cute. <laughs> Tyamisha Miller's 19 years on this planet were a roller coaster of love, laughter, and heartache. Despite facing countless obstacles, she wore a brave smile, determined to keep moving forward. Growing up in Philly, she was enveloped in the warmth of her family's love, but even that couldn't shield her from life's cruelties. Whether she was daddy's little girl or mommy's cherished angel, the bond they shared was unbreakable. She and her mother, Tanika, did everything together, sharing laughs, dreams, and moments of joy. They were inseparable, like Thelma and Louise, until tragedy tore them apart. Tanika had dreams of watching her daughter and siblings thrive, but those dreams were shattered when illness claimed her life at just 41. Ty and her siblings were left reeling, grappling with the pain of losing their mother far too soon. Despite the absence of her guiding light, Ty pressed on, determined to carve out a future for herself. But just as she dared to dream again, tragedy struck once more. The news of her pregnancy filled her with hope, but that hope was brutally snatched away in a senseless act of violence in Philly, robbing her of her future and her unborn child's life. Welcome to American Crime, Femicide Channel. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. At 5.45 p.m. on May 13, Ty, along with several other women and children, stood near a daycare when a car pulled up and unleashed a barrage of gunfire on the group. Ty Amisha took a bullet to the back, and despite being rushed to the hospital, she couldn't survive the brutality of the attack. Adding insult to injury, her daughter perished due to lack of oxygen. Both their deaths were declared homicides, but the truth is, they were victims of a senseless act of violence that ripped them away from their loved ones. Hello, good afternoon. Yesterday, on the, um, 13th and approximately 1739 hours up on 4th Street, we're buying the 4th. We had shots fired in the 2100 block of North 4th Street. Um, there was a crowd of people out there and a person or persons fired into a crowd where there were adults and young kids. Upon hearing the shots, people fled. Police were in the next block, they arrived on location within 30 seconds. Upon arriving, they uh, located an unknown female who had been hit by gunfire. Uh, they rendered first day, called a medical unit. The young lady, a Tanisha Miller, black female, 19 years old, was taken to a local hospital. Uh, she was worked on. Uh, she uh, succumbed to her injuries. The investigation 
started at that incident. We locked down the whole area. Uh, we located uh, numerous casings. I don't know how many times she was struck, but um, we have videotape with sound on it, and you could hear several gunshots going off. I believe that she was hit in her left side. The bullet entered on the left side, and I believe it exited, and my lieutenant here, correct me if I'm wrong, it exited her right side, so it was a through and through wound. It was a severe wound, obviously, a wound that couldn't be um, fixed. Upon uh, examination of Ms. Miller, it was learned that she was pregnant. She, uh, I believe, uh, approximately five months pregnant, and both the fetus and the young lady succumbed to the injuries. The investigation is ongoing right now. We are getting some information, some leads, but not enough that's going to give us what we need to be able to locate the shooter or shooters. Uh, my detectives in uniform have been out all night. They're back up there in the area trying to locate witnesses. Uh, we did have one witness down here yesterday, but um, that didn't really work out at that time. Hopefully things will change later on. So uh, it seems very mundane or very easy or very simple or a robotic gesture for me to say that it's a tragedy. I'm, I am so sick and tired of saying that it's a tragedy. Yes, it's a tragedy, but how are we going to stop this? Yesterday we had a whole detail out with my street crimes unit. We had the state police out and we have my street crimes unit working side by side to stop incidents such as this, stop these random shootings. And they were 30 seconds off. They were in the right neighborhood, but just 30 seconds off, 30 seconds off. We are trying, but this, this hurts. This, every homicide in the city hurts, but this really hurts because you have a 19-year-old female who was pregnant that was gunned down. I can't say that she was the target or anything like that, but who in her right mind would just shoot into a crowd of people where there are little kids at? Little kids, little helpless kids out there playing on a nice day, and you just shoot into a crowd of people. Harrisburg, we have to stand up. We have to solve this area, and the police cannot do it by themselves. I am asking you, anybody with information, any information, because when it comes to a homicide, it's like a puzzle. Every little bit helps. You know, we fit pieces together. I'm asking you, please, 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 on behalf of the unborn child, on behalf of the unborn child, can we please do something about this here? I'm getting sick and tired of seeing monuments up there. You know, she was beloved by her friends. They're up there putting up flowers and balloons and everything right now. But when is this going to stop? And the police cannot do it by themselves. So I'm asking for anybody with information, please come forth. The information that you give is confidential. Your name will not be put out there. But let's bring this person or persons to justice responsible for this here horrible, horrible, horrible tragedy. Thank you. Do you have anything to answer? I'm not sure about questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, we may be able to cover a couple. Um, real quick, obviously, the case is... Go ahead. Take over the mic. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the case is very much so still on the onset of the investigation. We're less than 24 hours in. There's still a lot of information that the detectives are trying to go through, as well as a lot of things we're trying to, as the commissioner put it out, um, puzzle, put the puzzle together, pieces of the puzzle together. I maybe I'll take a couple questions, but it's going to be very, very limited and not a lot of detail. So I do apologize, but understand the uh, integrity of the investigation is paramount. Right. 
Right. I think it would be premature to indicate whether, or for me to elaborate, whether we believe she was targeted or not. Nothing indicates at this point in time that she was the intended target, but again, that's still part of the, uh, the puzzle we're trying to put together. But there was a lot of people out there. Um, as the commissioner pointed out, there's video uh, to a certain extent of some of that area, uh, and we know for a fact there was a significant amount of people out there, and we've gotten not a lot of people to come forward. So again, we are, we are, we are asking people to help us to, to put somebody in, you know, not necessarily in custody, but to bring some form of justice to this family and to the, uh, the people that have suffered in reference to this incident. All right. Now there, there was, um, there were, there was a couple toddlers, you know, a couple three, four year old kids just legitimately right there where this happened, right where the gunfire was being uh, discharged in the direction of. And I mean, I can't, I can't articulate um, on camera what I think of these individuals. Um, I think you can probably paraphrase in your head what I'm thinking. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there's, there has to be consequences for this type of action. And that's where we're, again, we're encouraging, we're asking, we're, we're pleading for the public and for people to have information to come forward and to help us, uh, again, hold somebody accountable for these actions. Again, it'd be a little premature, but at this point in time, I do not believe that they'd be related. I have nothing to articulate that they would be. Um, but as the commissioner also pointed out, officers were less than 30 seconds. The officers heard a gunfire and responded. Like there was no 911 call for them to get there. They heard a gunfire and less than 30 seconds later from them hearing gunfire, there was, there was cars, there was cruisers on scene, there was officers on, on the ground right there. So, I mean, we, we know that there was some issues, there were some issues in that neighborhood and we're trying to curb that. And again, it's just, officers were at the wrong place at the wrong time but it's so close but again i think that shows the the lack of disregard for public safety and the lack of disregard for essentially human being when people are just that cavalier and that you know flamboyant that they're just going to go out and it's open fire on a crowd of people with police officers in marked cars half a block away so again i think that just kind of shows and articulates the type of individuals we're dealing with and again hopefully the public or anybody that knows something can come forward to help us because let's face it, if they're this brazen to do it once, I mean, the circumstances could be, you know, another week, another month, another year, they could do it again, and we can unfortunately be standing up here having the exact, the exact same conversation. At present, no one has been apprehended for the brutal murders of Ty and her baby. As the family and friends of Ty and baby Izaria gear up for their funeral, let's hold them close in our hearts and prayers. Considering all the challenges Ty faced in her brief 19 years, and the deep bond she shared with her dearly departed mother, it's only fair to seek justice for them both. Though they may have departed this world, they now rest in the comforting embrace of their beloved mother and grandmother. May baby Izaria and Taimisha Miller find eternal peace.